So, complex notation. We will often, although not always, use complex notation. And that, the reason we do that is that often things can become easier. You might think, well, hold on, complex notation is tough. Why are we using that to make things easier? Well, often it will help. Okay, we'll end up with such equations that we can solve because we're using complex notation, where it would be very difficult to do that without it. Okay. Now, we all know what a complex number is. We know j is the, the square root of minus 1. And z, in this case, is a complex number. We're plotting this on what's known as the complex plane. You'll come across this quite a lot in, in control. Okay, but here it's quite basic, straightforward. The circle of radius 1, okay, we've got the real axis. So any real number is going to sit on this axis. Any imaginary number is going to sit on this axis. And obviously, if we're not on either axis, we've got a combination of real and imaginary. That's still an imaginary number, but obviously it's got a real component to it. Z is one, is one such number, okay? It's a value of 1. This is a radius of 1. Value of, in terms of magnitude of 1. And it's moved through an arc from, X, uh, from theta equals 0, which is the positive horizontal direction, okay, through a certain angle of theta. And so we can work out what the real part and imaginary part are from basic trigonometry. That's the right angle triangle. Obviously, so Kotoa, so the cosine of the angle theta will be this distance, times by 1, okay? And the sine of that angle, which is that, is the imaginary part. And so we can write that in terms of trig. Okay? We can write that z equals cosine of theta plus j times by sine of theta. Because j, that's his bit, this bit is the imaginary part. So we multiply by j. A equals jb, you've probably seen before. Well, basically, this is what's going on. Okay? Cosine of theta plus j sine of theta equals z, which is a complex number. We can expand cosine and sine as Taylor series. This is recalling first year maths, I think, if not, if not before. And you can expand them as a Taylor series, and you end up with these, these equations. Okay, sine is theta minus theta cubed upon 3 um, splash plus theta 5 upon 5 splash, and so on. Okay, and cosine is similar. You can define those two together. Now, we know that J squared is minus 1. j cubed is minus j, because you've got minus 1 times by j. And j to the power of 4 is minus 1 squared, which is 1. Okay, and so on. And so if you stick that into your equation, so cosine will leave it as it is. Well, in fact, no, we stick j theta um, in there. That can accommodate for the minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. Okay, because obviously here, if I mark it up, here we've got a minus sign. And obviously, minus 1 is, is j squared. So we can actually join the j up with this bit, okay? And that takes, a, takes account of the minus 1. So we've got j squared in there, which is minus 1. Okay, so that becomes a plus. And obviously, j to the power of 4 is plus 1. So that doesn't change that. So we can switch j to the from there. j to the 6, obviously, will be minus, and so on, okay? And here, j sine, th j sine theta, well, let's take the j out, okay? We've got theta minus plus minus plus. So you can do the same thing again. J obviously j times theta, and then j times theta j squared is minus one minus j. Okay, so that takes into account of that minus sign and so on. So you end up with these two equations, and if you plug them together, you end up with this. Okay. Now it just so happens that that's the Taylor series for e to the j theta. Why is it important? So like I said, e to the j theta is cosine theta plus j sine theta. So we can use complex notation. And that, the reason that is, is that basically it's important. If you take the real part of a complex number, okay, you end up with cosine of theta. And what's cosine of theta? It's a sinusoid. And what's a sinusoid? It's an oscillation. So if you have a complex number that looks like that with the j in the exponential bit, okay, the real part of that complex number will be an oscillation. Okay, the real part of that complex number will be an oscillation. And so, wherever you've seen cosine theta, you could actually use this. Okay, whenever you see an oscillation, we could often use this, or we can use cosine of theta, it doesn't really matter. And if you go back to the free oscillation case, okay, where we said A equals 
Oh, sorry, x equals a cosine of omega, omega naught t, okay? Okay, we can actually use a times e to the j times omega t, okay? Omega naught t. For the same thing. The real part of that complex number will be an oscillation. That's fundamental, okay? Um, like I said, we'll be using that bit of knowledge throughout the course. You'll, you will come across e to the j theta all over the place. Like I said, if z rotates around the circle and you take the real part, okay, so if you go back to that circle, okay, z's going to rotate around, okay, and as z rotates around, as theta goes around, okay, if you just take the real part, that's just going to go backwards and forwards, isn't it? Okay, the real part of that is just going to increase to 1 and go back to 0 and then decrease to 1 and go back to 0 and so on. And so the real part of that complex number will be an oscillation. Okay, the imaginary part is also an oscillation, that's in this direction, but let's just take the real part. So why is it important? Like I said, if Z rotates around that circle, and you take the real part, you return to a simple harmonic motion. Okay? And if we define that angular velocity as omega, omega t, okay, let's disregard whether there's, a, uh, whether there's a zero there or not. We're not talking about natural frequency. We're talking about the angular velocity. And obviously, if you multiply the velocity by time, you get a distance. Okay, so omega times y t equals theta. Okay, so we can replace theta, therefore, in that equation with omega t. You end up with z is cosine omega t plus j sine omega t, which is e to the j omega t. Okay, and of course, you can add an amplitude on a phase angle if you want to t. And so this bit here, okay, you've seen that before. That's the, that was our solution to our free oscillation problem, okay? And that equals, if you add the sine bit, that equals a, e, j, omega, t plus phi. And obviously, if you take the real part of this, you get this. So like I said, you can exchange the two with each other. But often, it will be easier if you're using the complex notation as opposed to the trig. Trust me on that. We'll see it in a minute. So we can use this bit, this complex bit, as a trial function. So when we use cosine omega t as a trial function, we tested it out, it showed that it worked. We could actually use e, a, e to the j omega t as a trial function. And taking derivatives, this is an example of where it's easy, taking derivatives of e to the x or e to the anything is easy because it's the same thing. Okay? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's one of the magic things about e. Okay, you take the derivative of the number, you get the same thing back. Okay, and e to the j omega t, well, all that happens is you end up with e to the j omega t times by whatever's in front of the t. So the j omega comes out. And you do that again to get the second derivative, another j omega comes out. j squared is minus 1, so you end up with minus, and you have omega squared, because of the omega that comes out. So you end up with the same thing. Okay, we could apply that to um, that. And you take the real part of that number, and you get x as a function of time, which is that cosine. Like I said.